So my generation is going to transfer $37 trillion to my kids' generation. They are not going to move it into gold. They're not going to move it into stocks and bonds. They're going to move it into digital assets. That transition is as fundamental and as certain as every other major technological transformation that we've had in history. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Talk Crypto. Mark Yusko, CEO of Morgan Creek Capital Management and Bitcoin enthusiast, recently tweeted, Bitcoin went from zero to the 18th most valuable asset in the world in 14 years. Some of the companies on that list are Meta, SPDR, Apple, and Microsoft, all of which pale in comparison to what's happening with Bitcoin. In his latest interview with Paul Barron Network, Yusko discussed what will drive the next phase of Bitcoin adoption, which is already evident when we look at adoption curves and the acceleration of money. Yusko believes that the greatest value of Bitcoin lies in its network, similar to Apple or Amazon, but argues that it is superior because of its decentralized nature, which prevents it from being stopped, seized, or controlled by any entity or government. He also stated that Bitcoin will eventually replace gold as the base layer of money, since it is more portable and divisible, thus making it more attractive to younger generations. In fact, Yusko believes Bitcoin to be part of the biggest transfer of wealth in human history, even though everyone initially dismissed it as a fad. This is what creates the biggest investment opportunities. Let's listen to Mark Yusko as he makes the case for what it will take for the next level of adoption of Bitcoin. But before we do, please consider subscribing to our channel, as we bring you daily content on the latest crypto news. And now, let's jump right into the video. What's the bigger Bitcoin adoption catalyst? It looks like fear is going to win this one at 37%. Yeah. Interesting. And really, fear is is 64% because it's it, both of those things are inextricably of linked, those, right? Right. Because right. ultimately, you're either going to lose your money in in a bank, you know, repatriation, or you're going to lose it through a non-bank entity, right? The Federal Reserve Inflation. is not a bank. Sure. It's not federal and it has no reserves. It's not a bank. <laughs> it's it's a private corporation owned by the banks and a handful of wealthy European families, but it yeah. is not a bank. And yet they steal our wealth through this tax called inflation. We are at war, right? I'm wearing my khaki green today. Uh, it's not camo, but but I'm wearing the khaki green. We're at war. and But this war is different. This war is fought with chips, not ships. Right. It's not about naval superiority. It's not about physical troop superiority. It is about superiority of computing power. And yeah. the most powerful computing network in the world is Bitcoin. So it has a massive advantage against all the other currencies. That's why everybody's rushing to create a CBDC. But what they don't realize is what makes Bitcoin so special is that it's decentralized, that there is no nation state that controls it. There is no CEO. It is a fundamentally sound peer-to-peer -peer network. And that's very different than a CBDC, which is just digital fiat. And to your point, accelerated fiat. I mean, imagine how horrific the bank runs will be if there's a single bank, the Fed yeah. bank, and everyone has an app that can move their money. Now, the question is, well, if there's only one bank, you can't move it anywhere. Where are you going to move it? So mm -hmm. it reminds me, the first time I tried to transfer money from Bank of America to Coinbase, to buy to buy Bitcoin. They're like, all right, 14 days. I'm like, w w what do you mean 14 days? I'm like, well, you have to wait 14 days. I'm like, why? It's my money. I'm like, no, 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 you didn't read the fine print. It's actually our money. And it says right here, we can wait 14 days to give it back to you. I'm like, okay, you're right. I didn't read the fine print. No one ever reads the fine print. But yeah. I mean, I did eventually get it and I did eventually get to buy, but it was amazing to me experience recently where I was helping my brother with a project and I went to transfer money and they're like, oh, you can only transfer 25,000 a day. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. What? What? And then when I, after I did three, because I was trying to help, he's working on a house mm -hmm. project and yeah. I'm on the bank and um, they're like, oh no, I'm sorry, 75 a week. I'm like who set these rules? <laughs> what, I mean, and but again, it's my fault because I didn't read the documents, but holy moly. So let's just back up a little bit. 
because I, I don't want the the enormity of that that one chart to be lost. So the the most valuable asset in the world, single asset, is gold, twelve trillion dollars. Now, yeah, that twelve trillion is a little dicey, and that half of that is jewelry and chalices and and you know stuff that this doesn't have really a monetary use. It's it's ornamental. Right. You know the gilding on on the dome where I went to school at Notre Dame. You know you're not gonna go and scrape that off. But half of that, you know, six trillion, twice the mm -hmm. size of Apple, is yep. the monetary value, right? Which sits in central banks as the base layer of money, and everything else in the world, literally, all the rest of the currency in the world is built on top of that base layer of money. And and you think, you know, 14 years ago, this guy Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he she they are, comes along and says, you know, gold is great, and it's been the base layer of money for five thousand years but it suffers from two defects it's not very portable right it's really heavy it's tough to carry around and and it's not very divisible right i can't break a bar of gold and even if mm -hmm. i could break a bar of gold i can't stuff it in my computer and send it to your computer whereas i can send bitcoin with a couple of clicks of a finger and that means i think that that Bitcoin will eventually displace gold as that base layer of money. And what, what is money? Money is an asset that exists in the absence of a liability. And so everything else that we think of as money, right, currencies, you know, green pieces of paper, red pieces of paper in China, yellow pieces of paper in Israel. We all have our little pieces of paper that through belief and custom we think has value. It only has value because we ascribe value to it and we exchange it for goods and services, but there's nothing really behind it right? Except debt. And so if we think about what is Apple, well, Apple is a uh, platform that built the most valuable network on the planet, right? Based on market cap. Well, what, what's that network value? Well, everyone that has one of these is connected to all the other people and it makes us more functional and more relatable and, and more productive. And it allows them to, to extract very nice rents because we want to have that blue bubble instead of a little green bubble in our text messages because we're you know socially shamed. So we don't want to have an Android, even though Android around the rest of the world has 80, 80% market share. So let that sink in. So Apple has 20% market share, and yet they have the largest market cap in the world, bigger than Samsung, which should, should have a significantly higher market cap, but they don't. So then what? Then you go down through the list, you know, companies like Microsoft and, and others that have built networks. In fact, five, the five largest companies on that list aren't companies at all. They don't make things. They are networks, right? What is Amazon? They're a search engine. They match buyers and sellers. They don't make stuff. They deliver stuff. So Bitcoin in 14 years from nothing is now the 18th and actually as of the other day we're, we're up at 16 the 16th largest entity in the world by market cap it's pretty amazing you know everybody from warren buffett to jamie Dimon to all these other people said it was going to zero peter schiff right. peter schiff said it's going to zero since it was three dollars and what what people are missing is fundamentally this technology blockchain technology and bitcoin is simply a use case of blockchain technology it's a decentralized network the most decentralized network in the world it's right. the most powerful computing network in the world it's 1400 times more powerful than the cern supercomputer and so that computing network people say oh well you know governments will just ban it no they won't people forget 80 percent eight zero percent of Bitcoins held outside the United States. Americans only own 20% of it. And if Americans own zero of it, it would still function every single day. If there were no nodes in the United States, if they made it illegal to run a node, if they made it illegal to move your money in and out through fiat on ramps and off ramps, Bitcoin wouldn't care, right? It's the most popular currency in Nigeria today because <laughs> the Nigerian Naira is going to into the toilet like the Turkish Lira and the Argentinian peso and the Venezuelan Bolivar. So all of those assets are deteriorating in value relative to things like gold and Bitcoin. And Bitcoin 
has for a, for an entire generation, which will eventually be in charge of all the wealth, right? Here's a crazy stat. So our generation, I mean, I'm the old one, but I'm, I'm the second to last year of the boomers. So my generation is going to transfer $37 trillion dollars to my kids' generation, to the Echo Boomers, mm -hmm. okay? Here's the thing, they are not gonna move it into gold. They're not gonna move it into stocks and bonds. They're gonna move it into digital assets. And sure. my granddaughter, who's a Zoomer, a Gen A, she will never have a wallet. She will never know paper money. She's zero today, six months. She will never know paper money. She will never right. know leather wallet. She will know a digital wallet. She will know digital money, hopefully not CBDCs, hopefully Bitcoin at all. But ultimately, that transition is as fundamental and as certain as every other major technological transformation that we've had in history. But at the time when you're going through it, everybody dismisses it as a fad. For sure. Yeah. And that's why that's what creates the great the great opportunities. Yusko is a strong believer in blockchain technology and the power of Bitcoin to transform our understanding of money. Critics such as Warren Buffett and Jamie Dimon have dismissed this technology, calling it a fad, worthless, and a fraud. The reality is that crypto market cap has surpassed $1 trillion during a banking crisis. Bitcoin is still standing and its future as a global digital asset seems clear. Bitcoin has proven the world's best investors wrong. What do you think of Yusko's perspective on this subject? Will Bitcoin replace gold as money? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. This is Let's Talk Crypto and we'll see you in the next video.